Hey guys, what's up? So today we're going to take a look at this guy right here. This is Robinson's Trooper Premium British Beer. This is made in Cheshire, England, 4.7% alcohol by volume, 1 pint, 0 0.9 fluid ounces. And it's created by Iron Maiden. All right. And um, I'll read this to you. I know my camera is not picking up this up the best, but onward, onward, roll the 600. The charge of the light brigade, which, ins which inspired the Iron Maiden song, The Trooper, took place at the Battle of uh, Bela uh, Clava, 1854, during the Crimean War, when 600 British cal cavalry uh, courageously charged the uh, massed Russian artillery. This gallant but foolhardy assault resulted in massive losses of life that came about due to the misunderstanding of an order given by the commanding officer, officer Lord Raglan. And um, we got a little more here. Launched in 2013, Trooper is an award-winning premium British beer that has sold over 15 million pints worldwide. Iron Maiden vocalist Bruce Dickinson worked with Robinson's to develop a beer which has true depth and character. Malt flavors and um, critic, critic notes from a unique blend of Bobic, Goldings, Cascade Hops to dominate the deep golden ale with a subtle hint of lemon. Ooh, that's that's really a lot to say there. But uh, this looks interesting nevertheless. Um, I don't know if I have a favorite, favorite band, but I mean, Iron Maiden is definitely on my list of favorites. Some of their albums I like better than others. I would have to say probably... Um, Fear the Dark is probably my favorite album of theirs. Um, Peace of Mind was pretty good. Uh, I'm trying to think. Brave, I thought Brave New World was decent. That was, that came out in 2000. That was after Bruce came back after about a seven-year hiatus. Uh, during the time which they had Blaze Bailey. The X Factor was pretty good in my opinion, too. Um... What's kind of interesting about Maiden is, is they had actually more success with their second vocalist. Uh, the first guy that they had, Paul Diano, um, was on the first uh, album, which was just self-titled, and then the second album, Killers. And then Diano was, I believe, fired, and then Bruce Dickinson was hired. Um, and But... I, I just couldn't imagine an Iron Maiden without Bruce Dickinson. It's just it's just hard to imagine. But okay, let's give this a try. Hmm. Right. Well, this has a this definitely has a bold taste to it. It's it's quite hoppy, and I can taste a hint of lemon and a. Uh, um, maybe, you know, maybe just like a bit of, a bit of tart sweetness. I guess that's the best way I can describe this. Yes, yes, this is very good. I like this very much. Um, does it live up to Iron Maiden standards? Absolutely. And it's so funny because some people think like heavy metal music is for idiots, but there's a lot of groups, if you really read their lyrics, they're quite intelligent. I mean, Iron Maiden obviously being one of them. Um, I mean, if you even read some of... Sorry, that's my washing machine. But if you even read some of uh, the Iron Maiden... Um, I mean, if you read all the Iron Maiden lyrics, I mean, it's all about history and war and things you know things like that or if you read like um like some of megadeth's lyrics for example are pretty uh are pretty thought-provoking absolutely you know actually it's pretty it's pretty interesting
I think one of my favorite Iron Maiden songs is actually a song called, um, it's from the Peace of Mind album, it's called Sun and Steel. Uh, that's a really, really good song. Um, if you've never heard it before, I suggest uh, you listen to it. Uh, Can I Play With Madness is a pretty good track, too. That's from, um, that's from Seventh Son of a Seventh Son. But I suggest listening to the Fear of Dark album all the way through. It's one of those albums that, in my opinion, really, it really doesn't have a lot of weak songs on it. I mean, most of the songs are strong. There's a couple of weak spots like you get on every album, but uh, all in all, I think it's pretty solid. Um, I would have to say probably my least favorite Maiden album is probably... I, I believe it was called No Prayer for the Dying. It came out in 1990. It had the, the song Bring Your Daughter to Slaughter. Uh, that really wasn't, that really was not one of my favorite Maiden albums. And I would probably say my least favorite Maiden album was the second one with Blaze, which was, I think, called Virtual... Gosh, I, I, I'm, rack, I'm racking my brain. I think it was called Virtual 11. And correct me if I am wrong about that, but I believe that's what it was called. It came out in 1998, and that really, that really wasn't my favorite album of theirs. But Maiden is still going. And um, it's one of those groups that you could never replace, and I don't think there could ever be another Iron Maiden. And hopefully their music... Um, you know, will be enjoyed for generations to come. Well, guys, that's going to do it for me. I want to thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you have not done so already. And as always, guys, have a great rest of your day.